Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today is finally a day we can power on this Asus ROG Zen 2 Extreme because finally we have this AMD Threadripper 3970X. So if you'd like to know how this board looks like with all its lights and all its magic coming on, make sure to watch the end of the video to see how it looks like when it happens. Thank you to Asus Singapore again for lending us this motherboard. So right now we're going to bring Gordon in to plug all of these components together to test this motherboard. Yeah, let's go Gordon. Thank you so much Ralph. So now I will take you through how to do the installation of the CPU, the cooler as well as the RAM onto the ASUS Zenith 2 Extreme motherboard. If you're not too sure of the details on this motherboard, like its various features and all that, please do watch part one of the video. You just look at the link right above right here. First of all, we need to get the CPU out of the box. Now, the unboxing experience for the Threadripper 3rd Gen is a bit anticlimactic compared to the previous two. Once you break the seal underneath, you just uh, lift this up. Out. Ta da! And you have the Thread Ripper sitting in a nice little plastic thing over here. We need to get a couple of things out from the base. So, out from the base, when you pop this part open, you get a couple of things. You get the Thread Ripper sticker. You get smaller Thread Ripper sticker as well as the manual. This is a special bracket for those of you who have Isatec AIOs liquid coolers, like let's say the Cryrate A40, Corsair H100 uh, V2 series, or the NZST Krakens. And then of course, we have the Ryzen Tox screwdriver. So since we're going to be using the Nocturne air cooler, we won't be needing the uh, AIO bracket. First of all, we have to break the seal here. So that should do it. And we have the CPU itself. To open this, take this, you just press here. And this piece comes out. And then of course you can take your beautiful thread ripper out from here. But we'll keep that in there for the time being because I have to prep the socket. Now if you were to look at the socket itself, they do have a couple of things to let you know. Let's say this one open tree. Two, one, close. One, two, three. On the thread ripper socket, there are three torque screws which you use this thing for. So this is number one. This is two. This is three. So open three, two, one means to get this guy open. This is number two. Make sure these two are completely loosened. Then we get number one open. Yeah. So if you do it properly, this thing will pop right open. Now we have these two blue things. Get this piece out. And you see the exposed socket itself. Caution, these pins are very delicate. Whatever you do, do not touch them. Do not do anything. Now this little plastic piece, this is covering the socket itself. So you just slide this out. So right, there are two pieces down here. These two, please do not throw them away. These are very useful if let's say you need to take the CPU out from this motherboard for RMA purposes and you need to transport the board. So right, now that this setup is like that, so now we get our CPU out. Okay, once you get the CPU out, you will notice that they have a little piece of cloth here. And you slide it in. And then you bring it down. And you bring this piece down. When you close, you first go to screw number one, which is the one right here. Make sure this is in. Get this one in first. Okay, once all three are in, but not yet tightened, then you proceed to tighten. So do not over tighten this. A good way to gauge that you are there is that when this thing finally stops. One thing good about this is that if you happen to tighten too much, you'll just do this. So that's to make sure you, that you do not over tighten the top screw. Once you hit a stop, you stop. Like that. Okay, that is your thread ripper. Now we come to the RAM installation part. I have four sticks of 8 gig here. Now this is one part where a lot of thread ripper builders and owners tend to get mixed up or they get this part wrong. Especially some people who are coming over from either desktop Ryzen or Intel core platform. They have four sticks of RAM, they put all four here. Please don't do that. For high-end desktop platform like the Threadripper, how do you install the RAM? So if, let's say in the situation that you only have one stick of RAM, for whatever reason, you have it in like that. So this gives you single channel. Now what if you have one pair of RAM? You then do it this way. So that gives you dual channel. But of course, if you buy a track ripper, one of the benefits that you want is quad channel. Ah, so that's where second pair comes in. So the second pair goes on like that. Mm. 
this gives you quad channel which is one of the advantages that the Threadripper platform has over the Ryzen platforms have because of the way some air coolers are it is always good to get the RAM installation out of the way for Threadripper before you mount the cooler especially for a very big air cooler like this one over here the Noctua U14S uh, let's get it open so you can see she is one big mofo so right, there are a couple of things we need to get out from the box first. Okay, now for the Noctua U14, it comes with an additional pair of rubber grommets, the Allen key. Inside this little packet over here, you have the wire bracket to mount the second fan, the low noise adapter for the fan, and of course, the most important thing inside here is the thermal paste. There's going to be quite a fair bit of debate as to how you put the thermal paste on. You may see videos online, some people draw an X pattern here, some people put one big blob in the center. How effective one is over the other is kind of debatable for 1st and 2nd gen track ripper. For 1st and 2nd gen track ripper, the four dies were quite concentrated in the center right over here. So here, 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 here. But if you have ever seen the diagram for a 3rd gen track ripper, you'll notice its various dies and IO and all that is very much more distributed around. So doing the thermal paste application for 3rd gen track ripper requires a little bit more effort. So what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna put one here. I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna do this because Mr. Threadripper is happy! Yay. Yay! He's happy! Okay, just kidding. We're definitely not gonna leave the thermal paste like this. So what you should actually do is you get a little spatula. We have one like this. If you don't have something like this, like an old credit card or something like that, try to get your thermal paste spread around actually. It looks like it's not enough. Put a little bit more here. A little more here. Okay, you don't actually have to cover the entire die, but it's good to have as much of the surface area covered as possible. Like I said, you don't have to cover everything, but it's just you want to cover most of it. Because the remaining pressure by this guy on top will take care of the rest. For this cooler, because of the way it's designed, for me to be able to tighten all four screws, this fan has to come out first. Like so. So that gets the fan out. For the Nocto cooler, they ship with a little plastic piece here. Take that out. And you see the nice nickel plated copper. Now you see on the thread ripper socket itself, there are two holes here and two on the other side. These are wider apart from each other than the one here. So this thing can only go on one way, this way. You just line them up. Make sure all four screws are in. And then you take the Allen key that was provided. Next one. The good thing about this air cooler is that it's pretty open to the point that you can clearly see whether the screws are going right in or not. So once you see that yeah, all four screws are in, then you can proceed to use the tool again. Tighten each of them one by one. Take our fans, this becomes okay. I'm gonna clip them about here. If you have much taller RAM like the G Skill Trident Z range, you may probably have to adjust this fan a little bit higher up. That's the general outlook of what it looks like. We will just take this and plug it into the CPU fan header. Now I have my CPU installed, I have my RAM installed, as well as my Noctua air cooler installed. So let's turn this baby on. Right, now we have hooked up everything right here. We have our GPU right here, a uh, reference of 570XT. For supply, we're using the Corsair's EX1600i. One thing I like about this board, instead of having to use a screwdriver to jump start, you have a little start button. The one thing I love about this motherboard, for powering it on, ah, the postcode is here. Sometimes you may be stuck at a certain postcode and you may wonder what the heck is going on here. So once you pass it, you see Azul Zoroji Zenith 2 Extreme. 
So now our CPU temperatures, 54. This particular CPU has precision boost overdrive enabled. So the idle temperatures will float. So now we are in the BIOS screen. So as you can see from the layout, if you have bought an ASUS motherboard before, this layout should be pretty familiar to you. One thing I always like, they have the my favorites, which is the, the settings you always like to access. So that's a good thing. You have things like the AI overclock tuner. So you have auto, manual, DOCP standard. That's their version of the XMP tuning. As you can see, the RAM I've set it manually only to 3200.35 volts CL16 so these are some of the settings that you can find the rest is pretty standard Luma Note Socket no idea what this is my personal opinion why among all the various motherboard brands ASUS has one of the best interfaces around especially for those who like to tweak their settings for the CPU, their RAM and all that yes the Armory Crate feature like we mentioned in the X570 tough board review which uh, you can probably see right over there we have to deal with this Armory Crate that auto install so yeah it's also here on the Zenith 2 Extreme so now that we are done with the BIOS so let's go through with the motherboard as it is in Windows we are back booted up into Windows and we'll show you what the Armory Crate software from ASUS looks like. First off, we have Aura Sync, so this is where you adjust all the RGB effects. So you can do things like static. So once you select static, you see the entire motherboard turns red. So these are some of the effects that are available. Game library, let's try to figure out what this does. Ah, yeah, so you have the tools down here to download all your drivers. So like the AI suite, CPU ID, daemon tools, game first. So quite a couple of other things. And of course, ASUS. Can I just please ask you who the heck uses Windra in this day and age? Right, you. Did you actually pay money for it? No. Yeah, precisely. Me too. I didn't even pay money for it. The free option is good enough. <laughs> yes. This is a little bit odd because I just updated the BIOS to the latest, but never mind. But let's go ahead and download AI Suite. So traditionally, AI Suite has always been one of the plus points of owning an ASUS motherboard. The AI Suite is where you adjust your fan curve, CPU frequency, that kind of thing. Basically, performance tuning in a sense. So let's see how AI Suite looks like on the Zenith 2 XG. This is the AI Suite 3. I will consider this one of the big reasons you buy an ASUS motherboard. The fan expert. This allows you to tune the fan curve itself. So let's say for example, you can tell him, are you using an air cooler or are you using a one water cooler? So you can adjust your fan curve from here, which is again, is a good thing because from this utility, you can dynamically adjust your fan curve without having to reboot the set and go into the BIOS to adjust the fan curve. And the one thing I have always liked about this is, do you want to continue? Yes. This is basically fan tuning for dummies. You just press that one button and the ASUS motherboard will tune the fan for you. You can hear the CPU fan out here is like revving up and down. So the motherboard is basically trying to find the important points on the fan itself. Where is its maximum RPM, its minimum RPM, so on and so forth. If you are not really sure how to adjust your fan, you're not really sure what things like fan curve, press this, the motherboard does it for you commentary about this feature. It is true that the other brands have a variation of this fan tuning tool, but ASUS, I would say, is the pioneer in this. It's uh, For the other brands, they've only recently jumped onto it and offered similar features in their motherboard management software. Again, kudos to ASUS for being the pioneer in this field. Okay, so right, we've done the fan tuning already. So let's see how the results are like it. So if we can read right over here, CPU is now at 4 GHz. That's your vehicle voltage. The CPU is a little bit toasty, 83 degrees, and the the fan is at about 0.4, 0.5k RPM. Yeah, the reason it's running so hot is that it's running IDA64. The good thing is that you can see everything at one glance down here. You have fan tuning, you have a lot of things. Then when you pop over here, you have... Uh you have quite a couple of other things as well. So something else, the one thing good about this application, a lot of settings on a lot of other motherboards where you have to go inside BIOS, you have them here. So yes, we have finally powered this board on. I'm sure you guys like all the RGB, all the magic on this board. So Gordon can give us some of your thoughts about this board. Will you recommend to your friends or once you build a new computer? Uh, yeah. Cherry Pearl especially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, my thoughts on this board. It's a very fully featured board in the tradition of ASUS ROG line. You'll get pretty good value for what you're paying for. Although this is one of the more expensive TRX-40 motherboard, but for the amount that you're paying, very fully featured. I would probably give this board out of 10 an 8. Whoa. <laughs> the two points I have deducted off are mainly with the fact that like I can mention in the first video, this board by very nature only allows me to put 3 GPUs. If this allowed me to put 4, I'll probably give this guy a 9. But I think it's a very minor point for the majority of Thread Ripper users who are going to put one or two big powerful GPUs and all that. It shouldn't really pose too much of a problem for them. The other parts that I probably didn't 
really like about board actually was the M.2 slot underneath it. Oh yeah, the hidden one behind. The hidden, the hidden M.2. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah, that guy. Other than that, yeah, these are the only two minor quibbles about this board. Will I recommend this to my customer? Definitely. If they come to me and they say, I want to try Ripper build, I want the best, this will be one of the boards that I would definitely put to them for their consideration. Cool. Yes, yeah, so thank you to us Swiss Singapore again for lending us this board. So this guy has to be going back to them soon. For this part the last few times we're gonna see this board. But anyway, Gordon and I definitely have a lot of plans for this year 2020. Of course, Gordon, right? Yep. Okay, cool. In the meantime, if you have not caught part one, check it out. So uh, other than that, you can check out my playlist, my Asus playlist, my Ryzen playlist. If you have not done so, make sure to click on the I subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to know when we put up new videos. So very exciting year ahead. So Gordon and I thank you for watching again. So Bye guys.